Hey there YouTube, welcome back to another uh, low level learning video. Uh, by the end of this video today, you should be able to write a hello world program that outputs hello world to the screen in purely x86 assembly. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. Uh, my assumptions here is that you have a little bit of programming experience, you know how to use Linux, all that good stuff, um, and you're working in either some kind of uh, Intel Linux environment, be it a VM or bare metal on a laptop. Uh, and with that being said, let's dive right into it. Um, so before you get started, make sure you install this one package. We will be running, um, writing 32-bit assembly. So if you don't have libc6 dev i386 installed, you'll have issues at runtime uh, with the loader. Um, but once you have that installed, get and copy down this template into a file. Um, I call it 001.asm, and I'll, I'll walk through the template here, right? So everything with the a hashtag, as a kids would say, or a pound sign, is a comment, um, the title, and this is our goal, right? To write a string to standard out. Um, on the next line here, we have global start. Global start just gives the uh, assembler the directive that start is a global symbol that is exported to any other um, interested party that wants to look at it. Um, Intel syntax means that we're going to be writing our Intel assembly and Intel syntax. I know the Intel versus AT&T syntax war is kind of a holy one, so I won't take a formal stance, but we're going to be writing an Intel syntax. Um, and then these two lines here, the section text and the section data, that tells the assembler that anything south of this line is to be interpreted as text. That means that it is readable and it is executable. It is not writable. And the opposite is the same for section data. So it is readable and writable, it is not executable, right? You don't want any part of your program to be read, write, and executable. And we'll, we'll get into that in a later video. Um, so all assembly ends up being is a series of instructions that either have to deal with registers or memory. And I know that's a gross oversimplification of the problem, but that's honestly what it ends up being. So if you look at this instruction, right? move ex4 cool right so that means that we're moving the number four into the register eax you may be asking what are registers okay well let's take a look at um at this my beautiful art here so registers are um a part of the processor that are hyper fast physical pages of memory that exist to transfer data um between themselves or between memory um, each register has a purpose, and we won't go over all of them today. Um, but basically, understand that you have your general purpose registers here, so EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, etc. There are some others, um, and then your non general purpose registers. So, this is ESP. This points to the top of your stack in memory. And again, if you don't understand this, it's totally okay. This is for a later video. Um, EBP points to the base of your stack in memory. And EIP, or PC, more commonly referred to, um, is the address of the next instruction to be executed. But again, none of these are particularly important. Just understand that assembly happens at the register level. Cool. So now that we know what the registers do, we can write some code, right? We can say move EAX4 or move EBX5. And that's all well and good, and we can do this all day with moving stuff in and out of registers and in and out of memory. Um, but the question then becomes, how do we make the computer actually do something that we can physically see or you know, a process crashes or something? Um, and the way we do that is with what's called a, a system call. And a system call in Intel 32-bit is executed by interrupt hex 80. So this basically asks the kernel, hey kernel, I've set up my registers a certain way. Can you make the computer do something for me? And the uh, protocol, or I guess the the spec that we've set up to do this is accessible through what's called a system call table, right? So if you Google system call table 32-bit, you'll get this nice document from Google that Chromium puts out, and you can look at the x86 32-bit syscall table. And basically, you get a list of functions that you can ask the kernel to perform for you. Um, so for example, if we wanted to exit our program, we can't do it ourselves. We have to ask the kernel. So the way we ask the kernel to exit our process is to put one 
into the EAX register. And then we put the error code we want the process to return in arc zero, or in this case, EBX, right? And then we invoke that, that in 80 and the kernel takes an action. So let's, let's try that out. So we said that to get an exit syscall, we have to say EAX is one, right? Because that's what this table says. Exit has happened by EAX is one. And then the error code is through EBX. I want to return 65. And we invoke uh, the system call by typing int x80 as the, uh, the next instruction. Cool, so we write that. And we've got a compiler code and run it, right? So the way that we are going to assemble, assemble our assembly and then compile it into a, a valid elf is through this series of commands. So we have, we invoke the assembler on our code. We're specifying it's in 32-bit because we're doing 32-bit x86 assembly right now. And we are going to output an object file. So an object file is an intermediate artifact of the compilation process. If this is over your head, don't worry about it. But basically, it's not executable in this format. So we produce this with no uh, assembler errors. That's good. And now we say, hey, GCC, we would like to produce an executable elf in 32-bit mode from our original object that we produced from the assembler. And also, please don't link in standard or uh, libc because we don't care about libc. It will create uh, compiler errors if we don't do this. So we run this. Can't find, oh, I deleted the start tag. So what happened here is I said a global label start exists. The compiler depends on start existing. Otherwise, it has no idea where to begin the code and I failed to declare it. So we have to add start to our code. So we'll run the assembler again because the assembler has to put that symbol into the object file. We will invoke the compiler because the compiler needs to then look into the new object file and we'll get no errors, great. And in theory, if we run this, it should just exit. Okay, and now we want to check the return value of that process, which was 65, perfect. Okay, great, so that worked out exactly as we thought it would. Um, so now that we know how to write uh, syscalls to do something via the kernel, uh, the question is now, how do we output a string to the screen? Um, and the way we do that is just like any other syscall, right? Instead of exiting the process, we're going to have the process write something. Um, and how do we do that? So in Linux, when you start a process, there are three file descriptors that are open by default. Standard in, which is zero, standard out, which is one, and a standard error, which is two. So we're going to write to the file descriptor standard out, which is one. So EBX will be one. We're going to point ECX to the thing we want to print. And we're going to put into EDX the length of the thing we're printing. Sounds a little complicated, but it's really not that bad. Let's, let's dive right into it, right? So syscall four. And we're going to actually leave this exit syscall because at the end of printing, we want to, you know, exit our program. If we didn't do that, it would crash. Cool. So we said um, EAX needed to be four to pull this off. EBX is equal to one, right? Which is standard out, in, out, error, zero, one, two, standard out. So we're going to write two. And then ECX is equal to the address of the thing that we're trying to print. So in this case, when we're dealing with memory operations in Intel, we actually don't use a move instruction. Instead, we use this new instruction called LEA, load effective address. We are saying we are loading into ECX the effective address of message, right? Because we want ECX to point here before we invoke the system call. And then finally, move edx, the length of the thing we want to print. So it's going to be 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then in 80. Let's try to compile this and see if uh, I messed it up. No, it worked well. So we assemble, we compile, we run the program. Great. So what have we done? We've written a program that 
uh, sets up and invokes a write system call, sets up and invokes a exit system call, exits the, pro the process, and we get back the 65 error code. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, drop a like, hit subscribe. I drop these kinds of videos all the time, and uh, let me know in a comment what video you want to see next on this channel. So thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Keep learning. Bye-bye.